everybody and welcome back to my channel. Also, happy Halloween. It is not currently Halloween for me. However, it is Halloween for you, so I hope you are all having a spooky day so far and I hope you are excited for the spooky vlog that is to come. So in this reading vlog, I'm going to be participating in Vampathon, which is just like a Halloween readathon hosted by a slew of lovely ladies here on booktube. I participated for the first time last year. It was super fun, so obviously I am very excited to do it again. And let me tell you guys, I have quite the TBR that I am hoping to get through in the next five days. It's a little ridiculous. Like, we'll just see if it happens. If it doesn't happen, that's okay. However, I am in quite the reading mood. The weather this weekend should be perfect because it is supposed to rain for like the next five days. So we are going to talk about the slightly ridiculous TBR that I have for this video, and then we are going to get into the vlog. So Vampathon does have a little bingo board full of prompts, and honestly, I'm just gonna try and hit as many as I can. My goal is really to just get one bingo, but I think I'm gonna read more than four books so we'll, we'll just kind of see but I do have like some general outlines for what I'm going to read for each prompt. So the very first book here I have is not a spooky book whatsoever. <laughs> However we are coming up on the end of the month meaning I really need to finish some books that I have for certain book clubs. <laughs> so I am currently in the middle of Skyward by Brandon Sanderson which is the Women's and Words book club pick for this month and I just I just really need to finish this book so kind of has to go on this TBR. However, I am really enjoying this. I'm on page 317, so like I'm two thirds of the way-ish through the book. And I will give you some more thoughts on this in a moment, but I do kind of want to like get through the TBR first. So this is going to be a book to sink your teeth into, mainly because that's kind of the only prompt <laughs> that fits this book. Next up we have Bloodlines by Rochelle Mead. Now, if you've been here since last year, you know that throughout October and November of last year, I was reading like the original Vampire Academy series. And my god, that series is so bad, but it was so addictive. I could not stop. It was so much fun. And so many of you guys told me that Bloodlines was even better than Vampire Academy, so I have been meaning to read this book for such a long time. Originally, I was gonna do it like right after I finished Vampire Academy and then I was like, you know what? <laughs> I think I'm good for now. But now that it is Vampathon again, it is time to finally jump into the first book in this series. Literally like no clue what goes on in this series aside from the fact that we are following one of my favorite characters from Vampire Academy. And I'm going to be using this one for the paranormal or supernatural romance because I'm barely certain there's a romance in here. There's not, I'm gonna look like a clown, but like, I'm, I'm pretty sure there is. Next up, we have House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland, and I'm using this one for the gothic slash spooky cover because this whole like insect plant on face situation, I don't like that. So like kind of spooky, you know? But I'm so intrigued to see what I think of this book. I've seen many people read it and I feel like I've seen mixed reviews on it. So I've been wanting to pick it up for a while and it's finally time. Then this next book is probably the one that I am the most excited about out of any of these because I've been wanting to read this for a very long time. And that is Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. Obviously, I'm a vampire girly. We all know this, we are all aware of this. And honestly, it's kind of a crime that I haven't read Interview with the Vampire yet. This is just one of the books that I really need to read so I can fully call myself a vampire girly. Like, I feel like I'm somewhat of an imposter. Like, I have read Dracula, I have read Carmilla, but the fact that I haven't read this one, criminal, honestly. Then I also have only one graphic novel this time around. So I don't know if it's a great idea to like have a bunch of normal books and just one graphic novel, but we'll see. But my hold for Over the Garden Wall Distillatoria came in from the library and I'm gonna be reading it on my iPad. I know there are like Over the Garden Wall comics, like there's a few of them, maybe. I'm not 100% sure on what that situation is, but I have heard that like this is one of the only like good ones. So I've been wanting to try this one out for a very long time. We all know that I love Over the Garden Wall, so I'm using this one for the spooky graphic novel or manga prompt. Then also I have my Patreon buddy read, which I really need to read some more of, and that is One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. I'm just like, <laughs> as I keep going and listing books, I realize just how ridiculous this is going to be, but well, we're gonna see my friends. But I'm using this one for the book with a gothic setting because this is like gothic fantasy romance essentially. I am currently in the middle of this one. I'm on page 144 and it's a really quick read. So like I'm not too concerned about like this taking me a really long time to read. I just really need to read it. So 
going to be continuing this. Next up is a book which I'm not entirely certain I'm going to be able to get to, but if I have time, we're, we're gonna see. And that is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig, and I would just be using this one for the horror book prompt. I believe this takes place in a village surrounded by some creepy woods, some weird things are happening. That's kind of the last book that I currently have plans to read. I might pick up some Goosebumps books, I'm not sure, because I went and like collected a bunch of them in the months leading up to October and Halloween, and I've read one. I've read a single one of them. I have like 13 and I've only managed to read one. So I might try and pick up like one or two. That could be kind of fun as well. And those would obviously be really easy to like fit into the other prompt. So here's my TBR. Pray for me, please. So with that all being said, let's talk about what my plans for today are. So it's currently Thursday, October 26th. Now look, I know the Vampathon starts on the 27th. It starts tomorrow. But I want to post this vlog on Halloween. So I'm starting Vampathon one day early, but like, don't tell anybody. Nobody has to know. This can just be between you and I. So it is currently Thursday. It is the start of my weekend because I don't have class on Thursdays or Fridays. So I've got a nice four day weekend ahead of me full of reading. My very first reading plan is going to be finishing up Skyward. I think I have a little bit under 200 pages left, maybe? Like I said, I am really enjoying this one, which is a little bit surprising because I'm not really, like, that sure I'm into sci-fi. Like, I'm still undecided. But this book has been so fun, and I feel like starting with a sci-fi book from an author that I've already read from was a really good idea because I just knew that Brandon Sanderson would never lead me astray. But this book is following our main character, Spensa, who lives on this planet that is currently at war with these aliens called the Krell. And nine years ago, her father was actually fighting in this war. He was flying a, I'm gonna call it a plane. It's obviously a ship, a spaceship. I'm not acquainted to the sci-fi terms yet, but reports say that he allegedly deserted in the middle of a big attack and he has been branded a coward. Now that shame has kind of followed his family around. It's been following our main character, Spenso, around, but Spenso wants nothing more than to be a pilot and help in the war against the Krell, but she has been working against this assumption that has been made about her due to the actions of her father. And we're just following her as she goes through flight school. And it's been a really fun time. I really like the characters, Spenso. In the beginning, she got on my nerves, which I think is kind of the point, but as the book has progressed, she has definitely grown on me. I also really like the side characters. I think they're really fun. And I am excited to see where the rest of this book is gonna go because I know this is the first book in like a four book series. So lots of things should be happening, but I can tell you already now that I'm gonna wanna continue the series because I'm just really enjoying it. So my goal for this morning actually is to finish this up and then I don't know what I'm going to hop into next. We'll see. However, I do have some fun plans today after I finish this up to go to this mansion that is like somewhat near where I live. It is so gorgeous. It is beautiful. I love it. It very much reminds me of this mansion on the front of From the Dust Returned, which I'm not reading this book in this vlog because I just do not have enough time for that, but I did bring it out because it's coming with me to the mansion for like a little little comparison, you know, because it's just so gorgeous. This is one of my favorite book covers, mainly because I love this mansion. And the fact that I kind of have this mansion just like in real life, like, thank you. So I know that was a lot of information to throw you guys at once. However, it is finally time to get into the vlog. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to just chill for like five days and do some great reading. So I'm gonna go finish Skyward and I will talk to you guys later. <laughs>
exciting update. I just finished Skyward. And I'm like slightly tempted to give it a five star. It's like a really high four star. I loved it, to be honest. I thought it was so much fun. I feel like the last 200 pages of this book were just so good, but it was also just really good the whole way through. And even though this is like a 500 page book, the pacing is still like so quick. I was just so engaged the whole time. And I'm just like, I need to read the second one. Like now, like obviously not right now because I have so many other books on my TBR, but like if I had the second one in my possession, I would be picking it up, but I am going to go order it very soon because I need it. But the last bit of this book was so good. I feel like we were finally starting to see Spencer interact with some of like her flight crew members or whatever, kind of seeing her start to form friendships. Also another part of the plot of this book is that she finds this like broken down ship one day when she's exploring the caverns. And throughout the book, you're following Spensa and her friend Raj as they try to get the ship working again. But the ship also talks because it has AI. It's like some advanced technology that they don't have like on their planet currently. So she like doesn't know where the ship came from. But the ship's name is Embot. And I thought he was also just like a really fun addition to the story. And the ending of this book was just so good. Like there were a lot of battles throughout this book because Spensa is becoming like a pilot. So they're always going out for like these training things that somehow inadvertently turn into like actual battles that are happening with the Krell. So it's always like really fast paced. People are dying left and right, but the action is written so well, which makes sense because like I always really enjoy like Brandon Sanderson's action scenes, but something about like the space setting it was so sick, to be honest. I just really enjoyed it. So that is just really exciting, to be honest. I feel like I have unlocked a new genre today. Like, I don't know what my next sci-fi read should be, but I think I'm gonna focus on, like, catching up or finishing this series. I don't know if it's finished or not. I think maybe the most recent one just came out or it's, like, coming out in November. Maybe I should check on that. That could be useful information. <laughs> okay, it comes out on November 21st. So, is it the last one? Yes, okay. So Defiant is the fourth and final book in this series. So hopefully I can like acquire books two, three, and four. And there might be like a, so like there might be another book in there somewhere, I'm not sure. But um, I need to read all of this series ASAP because I thought I just really liked it. So, um, very exciting times. Anyway, this was a great start to my readathon. Now it is time to go to the, the mansion thingy that I was telling you about earlier. And I am so excited because this place is gorgeous. You'll see. So let's go. So I have returned from visiting my spooky mansion. It was absolutely stunning, to be honest. Like the leaves looked gorgeous. The house is obviously so beautiful and it started to rain like, oh, it was, it was so good. I mean, but it did start to rain. So I read like two pages of small favors cause I was like 
maybe, maybe I'll read this one. We'll see. Kind of give it a try. And then it, it just started to rain. So I didn't make like much reading progress, but I literally don't care because it was just so nice to just be there. But now that I'm back, I'm going to jump into a different book because actually I've decided that I'm really thinking I want to pick up Interview with the Vampire next. I can't wait to see what I think of this one. Also, obviously because it is Vampathon, it is perfect to pick up such a quintessential vampire book. So I'm going to jump into this one, but I think first I'm going to set up my annotation key for it because I do really want to annotate this. Honestly, if I don't like this book, I'm gonna be so disappointed. <laughs> but I feel like I will enjoy it. So let's go, let's get into it. Is so good because you get a nice little view of Fritz. Hi. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> anyway, it is currently Friday morning, the official first day of Ampathon, and I do indeed have a couple of reading updates for you. So first of all, I did start Interview with the Vampire yesterday. I'm on page 154. I think I just recently made it to part two. I've also been annotating it. Here's what that's looking like. And not surprisingly at all, I'm really enjoying this book. <laughs> I feel like you're gonna be pretty hard pressed to find a vampire book that I don't enjoy. I don't think this is gonna be like a favorite vampire book, but I am liking my time reading it. So basically the premise of this book is exactly what it sounds like. We are just sitting down with a vampire and he is telling us his life story, essentially. The first section of this book mainly focused on Louis, who is the vampire, kind of what his life was like immediately before he turned, what it was like as he was turning, and then kind of the events that followed directly after he turned into a vampire. And I'm really liking learning about like the vampire lore that Anne Rice is using because she seems to be poking fun at a lot of like stereotypical vampire like weaknesses and just general information. And I really like that. At one point the interviewer is kind of quizzing Louis on like some like typical vampire things that people might know. So he asks, can you look upon crucifixes? And Louis is like, of course I can look upon crucifixes. I actually rather like looking at them. He also asks something about a keyhole and I've never heard this one before, which is interesting, but apparently there's this legend that vampires can turn into mist and like 
go through keyholes. So I don't know what that's about, but that's an interesting one. But Louis is like, that is how you would say bullshit. So they also apparently cannot be staked through the heart, which is rather disappointing. They can also look in mirrors, although I'm very intrigued to see what Anne Rice's stance on garlic is. Like, I'd like to know about that one. I always think it's so interesting to just see how off what do you want? Hang on. Oh, you've got to be in the vlog now. This is my cat, Poppy. She never comes to see me. She's only here right now because she wants food, which is why she's never in the vlog. Okay. I'm not feeding you. I fed her like two hours ago. She's fine. I could hear her like meowing outside as she was walking up to my door. She's so annoying. You're so annoying. Where was I before you rudely interrupted me? I really like seeing what authors do with like the typical vampire information and like what they decide is too ridiculous, but what they still decide to keep. For example, the vampires still cannot go out in sunlight and they sleep in coffins, which I, I also love the sleeping in coffins thing. And honestly, it makes sense. It seems like Anne Rice's vampires are very like sophisticated types of vampires because they don't have like stupid limitations put on them like some vampire stories do. It's like very, they're like refined vampires, you know? But apparently sending the vampires out in sunlight is one line that you just don't cross. Unless of course you're some sort of teen vampire show, movie, whatever, and they need to go outside. So you come up with some convoluted reason as to why they can go outside and it's all good. I'm looking at you, daylight rings and sparkly skin. <laughs> Like, don't get me wrong, I love Vampire Diaries and Twilight, but obviously those are ridiculous. So I'm really enjoying getting all of the, the vampire information. I'm also really liking Anne Rice's writing style. There are just some lines that she has that I'm like, wow. And I'm so glad I'm annotating it because there were definitely some that I wanted to remember. I really like this line. It says, but this was the slow decay, the body refusing to surrender to the vampire of time, which had sucked upon it for years on end. I don't remember what that was in reference to, honestly, but context is not needed. Just appreciate the writing. I also think the characters are very interesting because you have our main character, Louis, who's kind of like the blueprint for sad boy vampires. Like, that's just the, the general vibe that I'm getting from him. He's the main character that is like telling us his life story. But then you also have Lestat, who is the vampire that changed him. And Lestat is a manipulative, controlling vampire that gets on my damn nerves. He's just the worst, to be honest. And I just hope he gets what he deserves. We have also been introduced to Claudia. And I just, I just, um. First of all, I kind of think the Volturi had the right idea in saying that like children should not be turned into vampires because that bitch is insane. But also like the dynamic that she has with Louis is so weird. And like, I really don't like it because she was turned when she was five, but the relationship they have is like so strange. Like I know she's aging mentally. The way that he describes her sometimes, I'm like, no, like what if we did not do that? So I don't know how I feel about that, but Louis was too passive to like actually progress the story on his own. So I think Claudia was kind of the necessary like counterbalance to him. So at the point that I'm at right now, I think they just went to Europe, but potentially a lot of things have been going down. A lot of things that I will not tell you because you know, spoilers or whatever, but I am definitely very excited to read some more of this. My goal is to finish this today, which should not be too hard because I am liking it. So there's my update on Interview with the Vampire. However, I do have one other update for you because I decided to start the audiobook for this this morning and that is House of Hollow. I am on page 75 maybe and it is also my goal to finish this book today. How long is it? It's only 292 pages. Okay, so it's not even 300 pages. So I should be able to finish this up today as well. This book so far has been following the three Hollow sisters who when they were younger, like randomly disappeared for a month. And then when they came back, they were really weird and nobody has ever been able to figure out where they went, what happened to them, all of that. So we're following the youngest sister whose name is Iris. And so far we've kind of just been learning about her life. We've been meeting the other two sisters. Although the oldest sister, Gray, has recently disappeared. Like they don't know where she is. They were supposed to meet up, but she didn't show. Her boyfriend is like, oh, I haven't seen her for days. So we're trying to figure out what's going on with that. Also, there was like a Vogue article where somebody was like interviewing, I think it was Vogue. Um, was interviewing the oldest sister and she was like, I actually remember quite a bit of what happened from the time when we disappeared 
you just wouldn't believe me. So this is kind of the first that Iris is hearing of that because she certainly doesn't remember anything. So I'm kind of just assuming that the rest of this book is going to focus on Iris finding Grey and her learning about what happened to her during that month. So many questions. It's very intriguing. It's very mysterious. I wouldn't say I'm loving it, but I am decently enjoying it. So goal for today is to finish both of these, which I should definitely be able to do. Also, I need to grab it. Hang on. So I did get some mail yesterday and I have been, oh, I've been waiting and I finally have my copy of A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. This is the Barnes & Noble exclusive. I love this color of pink, it's so pretty. And also, under the dust jacket, they have a little bit of gold foiling. I am so excited to read this book. I read the first sentence of the first chapter yesterday and I'm just like, I need to read this book right now. But obviously I'm not going to read this book right now. I think I'm gonna pick it up next week, but I cannot wait, so. Exciting book mail time. Anyway, like I said, it's currently Friday morning. I think I'm quickly going to go to Half Price Books because I need to return something and I'm like quickly running out of time to do that. But I thought I could take you guys with me and if I should happen to see something, I might have to pick it up. It has been almost a month, I think, since I've been to this Half Price, so I'm slacking. So we're gonna go book shopping really quickly. Then I'm gonna come home and read. So it is a bit later and as you saw, I did go to half price, but then I also just popped into Target to pick up a few things and I thought oh, we could do like a little haul. Like that could be kind of fun. First of all, I did pick up one book from half price and that is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. This I think is like a pretty good wintry read and seeing as we are moving into the colder months, which side note here, it's a high of 48 today and it literally almost reached 80 degrees yesterday. So like the Midwest weather, it's just like the craziest thing you will ever encounter, I swear, but it feels so nice today. It is so crisp. And let me tell you, there's nothing I love more than a crisp day. So it is perfect. But I'm like pretty sure this is like kind of wintry, perhaps. I've been wanting to read something by Naomi Novik for quite a while. And I thought it could be this, so that's fun. I have no idea what it's about, to be honest. I know the um, I know the synopsis for Uprooted, which they also had that one, which I did not get, but I don't exactly know the synopsis for this one. But it's been described as a beautifully woven fairy tale in which the boundary between wonder and terror is thinner than a breath. That is a stunning way to describe a book. Oh my god, I'm excited. Okay, so there's that. And then I also popped into Target, as I said. First of all, sorry this bag is so loud. I decided to pick up another book, which I might potentially be reading during Vampathon. I don't know. But I decided to pick up My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. This is a book that I've seen quite a few people talking about. They all say it's super fun, and I'm like, I want to have a super fun time. Seeing as it is Vampathon, this would be perfect. I don't know. I've been holding off on picking this up just because I don't like the purple and pink, like, split kind of color thing going on here but i decided that i just need to get over that frankly and my hold from the library is taking way too long because i would like to read this before halloween so i decided to pick it up it was also 20 percent off so i was like mm, what was i gonna what was i gonna do saying no i am like it just sounds so fun and I cannot wait. So I'm hoping I can find some room in my TBR to read that. And then I also wanna make some hot chocolate later, so I picked up some pumpkin peeps. I really wanted the ghost peeps, but they were sold out, which is so rude. I mean, I'm not surprised, seeing as it's like a few days before Halloween now, so like, obviously some of these things are gonna be sold out. And like, these guys are kinda cute too. Like, they're fine, but the ghosts, I'm, wait, I just love some ghosts. So like, it's all good. I could go to a different Target and probably find the ghosts, but I just really don't have that type of motivation today. So um, I bought these so I could make some hot chocolate and put like a little pumpkin marshmallow in there. So I might do that later today. So 
yeah and then the only other thing i got is whipped cream for said hot chocolate so there's my little haul got two books even though i'm not supposed to be buying books in october but we don't have to talk about it anyway i'm going to go home probably jump into the rest of interview with the vampire and i will give you guys an update when i finish that Saturday morning now. I do have a couple of reading updates for you. First of all, I did finish interview with the vampire last night. Here's how my tabs ended up looking. Very satisfying. I love a good annotated book, especially when it is a vampire book. I ended up liking this book. It's definitely not like a new favorite vampire book or anything. My main issue with this book is that it's very slow because it really is just one long... Um, my cat Winnie is in here and she just bolted over like seven i don't i don't know this book is really slow because it basically is just one long monologue of louis telling us the story of his life after he became a vampire but that's not to say that it's like a bad book because that's honestly my only issue with it i think the characters are so interesting and very complex even though there are certain things that obviously are like issues it's kind of the point that their issues and seeing the way that Anne Rice decided to explore those was very intriguing. Especially when it comes to Claudia as a main character because she was turned into a vampire when she was five, but she continues to age mentally and the problems that that like proceeds to bring up throughout this book definitely very uncomfortable. So seeing the way that different relationships in Louis's life were explored was definitely very interesting. And unlike anything I've encountered in any other vampire books, I also just really liked Louis's own personal character development throughout this book, even though it's really sad because you can see just how I don't know, like depressed he becomes throughout the course of this book. But in general, I am really glad that I decided to pick this up and read it. I thought it was really fascinating to see what Anne Rice's vampires were like. And again, her writing was stunning. Like there's this whole section of this book when Louis and Claudia first get to Paris and the writing 
is absolutely exquisite. The descriptions of the setting and the scenery and the Paris architecture and just the general ambiance and atmosphere that Anne Rice was able to create was absolutely gorgeous. And I was eating that part up. So I think for now, those are kind of all the thoughts that I have on this book. I liked it. I wish it was a little bit more fast paced, but I still really enjoyed it. I feel like this was a book that was necessary for me to read, seeing as I do consider myself a vampire girly. So achievement unlocked. I finished Interview with the Vampire. And I do think I'm going to watch the movie very soon, which I'm excited about. So that was book two done for Vampathon, but soon it will be book three down for Vampathon because I did not finish House of Hollow yesterday, but I made it to page 182. So I'm in the middle of like chapter 15, but I will be finishing this up this morning. As for this book, I'm actually starting to like it a lot more than I was yesterday. I feel like it took a little bit to like fully get in to the meat of this book, you know? But these last like a hundred or so pages that I've read have been Iris and Vivi kind of following this trail of clues that their sister Grey left for them before she disappeared. But learning more about what has happened to these three sisters and like just everything surrounding their disappearance has been really fascinating. And I'm liking this more than I was yesterday. It's still not a favorite, but I am enjoying my time reading it. I sat down last night and I read like a hundred pages in one go. It's a very like easy book to read. I'm enjoying it. So I'm gonna go finish this up this morning and then what am I gonna do for the rest of the day? I'm not entirely sure. For now, I'm just going to focus on finishing House of Hollow. So I just have a brief update for you because I did just finish House of Hollow and I actually ended up really enjoying it. I feel like in the beginning, I was rather unconvinced to be honest. I wasn't really that into it. I wasn't exactly sure where things were gonna go. But once we hit the 100 page mark, my enjoyment increased exponentially because this book <laughs> is, it's so bizarre. It's creepy, it's eerie, it's unsettling. It's all of the good buzzwords, you know? This relies heavily on like nature horror. So there are like bugs crawling out of our main character's skin, flowers that also like grow out of skin. Like it's disgusting to be honest. There are a lot of descriptions in this book. I was like, okay, I did not need to have like a visual for that. But unfortunately I now have one in my head and I really need to check out some more nature horror because I also read What Moves the Dead recently. And while it's not like fully nature horror, that's like fungal horror. So like kind of same vibes where like weird things are growing out of people. <laughs> and I never thought I would be like that into that because well, I mean, okay, I wouldn't say I'm into that, but like I think, <laughs> cause that sounds weird. But I definitely think it's something I'm gonna have to check out because it's just, it's so odd, but it's also written really well and it's so strange, but so intriguing. And there's this element of a mystery throughout this book because the whole premise is that you have the three girls who went missing, but like they haven't been quite right since they got back. And you're trying to figure out why that is, what happened to them while they were gone. And let me tell you, once you figure out what happened to them while they were gone, you're like, oh, okay. The horror elements in this book like really kicked in at the end and it was so creepy. Like it's not scary, but it's just so bizarre. I would honestly just consider this entire book to be very unsettling, but in the best possible way. So honestly, like if you're in the market for a weird book, I would recommend this one. I'm really glad I randomly decided to pick this up because I knew nothing about it, to be honest, when I bought it. But I was like, I this looks intriguing. Let me check it out. So that is three books down for Vampathon. Very exciting. Almost have my bingo. So that's fun. I'm going to probably make some hot chocolate because it is so cold today. It's like a high of 40 
which is, I'm living for it, don't get me wrong, but like, it's very chilly. So it would be the perfect day to like make some hot chocolate. I'm gonna go do that and I will catch up with you guys later. turn this little dude on so you can just be like having his little rave back there okay but it is a couple of hours later and i do have some exciting reading updates for you because i i'm really excited about both of these books first of all as you guys saw i read over the garden wall to stellatoria and it was so fun and i am so sad <laughs> that I cannot find a copy of it anywhere. I know if I were to find one, it would be like super expensive, but I want one so badly. <laughs> but that that's gonna be a uh, long-term project. I will keep my eyes peeled for one. It's basically just like, if they were to add another episode in there, that is exactly what Distillatoria is. I'm not 100% sure if it's actually canon or not, but like personally, I'm just gonna take it as canon because it feels exactly like the rest of the show. I just love the art. I love seeing more from Wart, Greg, and Beatrice, and it's just so autumnal. It was Halloween. It was just, oh, it was so good. <laughs> so if you guys also like Over the Garden Wall, you should definitely check out Distillatoria. I borrowed it from my library, so that's how I got my hands on it. And if you guys can do the same and you like Over the Garden Wall, I'd recommend. And then this other reading update. <laughs> so I started My Roommate is a Vampire. I'm on page 116 now. It's just so fun. It's just like a ridiculous, spooky rom-com kind of situation. And there is nothing I love more than a ridiculous rom-com. <laughs> it was even blurbed by India Holton and like India Holton writes the Dangerous Damsel series. And I also love that series for the fact that it is just absolutely ridiculous. And this, while slightly less ridiculous, is still like, is not serious at all. <laughs> like, it's just a really good time. Basically, you're following our main character, Cassie, who is kind of down on her luck. She's not making a lot of money. She's getting evicted from her apartment. So she needs to find somewhere to stay like ASAP. And she sees this ad on Craigslist for this really nice apartment in this really nice area. And it's only $200 a month. So naturally, She's kind of suspicious because what's that all about? So she ends up emailing the guy who put up the listing and right off the bat, he's kind of a character, you know? He talks like he's from like the 18th century. He's very formal, but she's kind of just like, maybe this is like some 70 year old dude who needs somebody to live in their apartment. So eventually she ends up going to the apartment so she can like take a tour. And when she gets there, turns out he's in his mid thirties really hot, but he's just like kind of weird, you know? So she ends up obviously staying at the apartment. He has like a couple of rules, like don't disturb me at night. Don't go in this weird closet at the end of the hall. And obviously that's all kind of weird, but the fact that she found a $200 apartment, she's basically willing to forgive anything until one night she stumbles across a blood bag in the fridge. And naturally she's like, what the hell, dude? And it kind of goes from there. And I'm just enjoying it so much. Seeing Frederick, that's the vampire's name, trying to navigate this like modern world is very entertaining. I am definitely aiming to finish this up today. I'm really excited to read some more of it. And I don't know what I'm going to jump into next, but that seems like something to figure out tomorrow. So I'm going to go and I'll catch up with you guys later.
So it is now Monday morning. I did not end up really vlogging much of anything yesterday just because to be honest, <laughs> I'm kind of burnt out from reading, shockingly enough. I've read like five books over the last four days because I did end up finishing My Roommate as a Vampire on Saturday night and I, <laughs> so tired. Like don't get me wrong, it's been so fun and I've been having such a good time filming this vlog and I do still have one book that I want to finish today. <laughs> but after this, I'm gonna need a little break. Just a little one. But I thought I could give you my reading updates because I have two. So first of all, like I said, I did finish My Roommate as a Vampire and this one was so fun. <laughs> Basically the entire second half of this book consisted of our main character Cassie teaching Frederick, who is the vampire, all about the modern world. Like they went over Instagram, TikTok, ordering coffee, other important modern things that I can't think of. And their dynamic was just so cute, honestly. I absolutely loved Frederick as a love interest because even though this is set like in the modern day, he is obviously a vampire from like the late 1700s, I think. So just the way he acts, the things he says, he's a very chivalrous guy, the way he treats our main character, it's very reminiscent of like a love interest in a historical romance book. And I'm all for that. The blend of the very historical romance, reminiscent kind of relationship with the modern setting was just so fun and something I never knew I needed. To be honest, the ending of this book was incredibly convoluted. And as we got to it, I was like, oh, oh, that's what we're doing now. But I feel like it kind of just matches the energy of like the entire book. So I was also very unsurprised. So like if you're not in the mood for like a silly goofy time, I would not recommend picking up this book. But if you are and you don't mind a little bit of like ridiculousness being thrown into a little vampire romance, I would recommend. This book was also such a fast read. I mean, I sat down on Saturday night and I basically finished it in like two sittings because I took a break to go eat some dinner. But when I was done, I got right back into it and I just flew through the rest of it. So it's a really good book to sit down and binge. And I'm also kind of thinking there's going to be like a companion book potentially to this because the way that some things were happening with Frederick's friend Reginald, who I also really liked what he added to the story because he's like Frederick's only friend because Reginald is also a vampire. And their dynamic was so funny because Reginald is basically just trying to rile Frederick up the entire book. <laughs> But he was also just like a really fun addition and I think they were like kind of setting something up with him and a, an accountant, maybe? I don't know. But I would absolutely love to read that book so I hope that actually is happening. But it was, it was just really fun. It was really, you know, kooky, but I enjoyed it. So there is one book. And then I do also have an update for you guys on One Dark Window. I've not finished this, but I'm very close to finishing it because I am now on part three. The Blood, that sounds ominous as hell. And I'm on page 323. So I think I have around 65 pages left, maybe? I don't know how I feel about this book, to be honest. There are so many aspects to it that I really enjoy because I really like the romance. I feel like now that we've gotten obviously deeper into the book, more is happening with that. And I do really like their dynamic. I don't think Raven is really gonna be that memorable in the long run, but I'm still enjoying it. I'm also really liking the writing because there are some really good gothic eerie descriptions that do such a good job at setting the ambiance and the general atmosphere. I think the magic system is really cool because it's based off of this deck of cards and I'm like that's really fun but I just don't care about the plot. I like all of the other little aspects of this book but like the main thing that I don't like is the plot and obviously that's the most important part of the book so I'm kind of struggling with it but I'm still liking it we've definitely like learned some interesting things I'm excited to see more but I just I'm just not invested in it and I'm not as obsessed with it as I was really hoping to be that's kind of the only other reading update for you I just really want to finish One Dark Window so this is going to be happening this morning, but first I actually thought we could do something different because I feel like I've done a distinct lack of fall activities in this vlog because obviously I've been reading and that was fun. And we went to the mansion and that was really cool too, but I haven't done much of anything else. And I was like, I kind of want to do something like crafty, but not something that's too big of a commitment. So I'm thinking this morning, I want to do a little bit of pumpkin painting. I thought that could be fun. I got this pumpkin from a little pumpkin patch in my last vlog, I believe. And it's like such a cute little shape and size and I think it'll be perfect to paint. So I'm gonna do something really simple. Probably just gonna paint some bats on it to be honest, but I thought it could be a fun little thing to do. 
Also, it's Halloween Eve right now. I know it's not actually a thing, but it's a thing in my book. So I'm going to spend the morning painting my pumpkin, finishing up One Dark Window, and then that'll be the end of the vlog. So I hope you guys are excited for a little crafting. Well, it's not really crafting, but like, eh, close enough. So let's get into it. my pumpkin. I think it's super cute. It actually turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to and I'm really excited about that but yeah honestly I'm kind of thinking I might like pumpkin painting more than pumpkin carving. I feel like it's just easier. You can do different colors. It's, it's kind of fun. Anyway there's that. Just a quick update to tell you that I love it. Anyway I'm going to go finish up One Dark Window and I'll talk to you guys when I'm done for a little wrap up. Unfortunately, officially come to the end of this vlog. However, we have quite a few things to go over So you're not getting away just yet. <laughs> First of all, I do have some book mail Which I am so excited about so I thought we could open the Waterstones package first I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I'm so excited Let's get into it. Look at her. Oh my god. It is so stunning. It is so stunning. <laughs> Okay, so this is the UK edition of A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. I love, I love the color. I love like this teal. It's so pretty. I'm so excited to see what the design is under the dust jacket. Like the fact that there's four different ones is just so fun. And I need to see a picture of the four designs because there's one I think in particular that I want, but I don't remember what that was. Okay, so I either want the sword or the apple. Preferably, I want the apple, but we'll see manifesting that's gonna be an apple okay okay it's neither of those but the foiling is so gorgeous like it i mean wow it's so shiny and i do believe it is signed by stephanie garber which is also super exciting so i'm so excited to finally have this i'm gonna be reading this as i think i said earlier in this vlog next week but i do also have my fairy loot books for this month as well so gonna do that. I honestly have no clue what these are possibly going to be, but this looks cute. I like the colors already. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that is so cute. Oh my god. This is so pretty. 
Look at that. Okay, so this is The Forest Grimm by Catherine Purdy. Look at this cover. I love the green. The spine. Oh, that's so cute. And then we also have the sprayed edges. Oh my god. Okay. And also, oh. Oh, wow. Look at Oh my, look at another dust jacket. Look at this. Oh my, well, obviously look at this. I'm showing it to you. We have like some little mushrooms in the back. Oh, that's so cute. I have no clue what this book is about. Even the cover alone is just intriguing. Like the forest grim. Thank you. It sounds dark. It sounds fairy tale esque I love these sprayed edges so much. They're absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really excited about this one. Oh, it says fairy tales come to life and experience a dark and deadly twist. That sounds really fun. And then we also have the other one. Oh, I forgot that this was gonna be the one for, oh, this is so, oh my God, this is so pretty. <laughs> I've seen this book a lot of places and that is the Hurricane Wars look. Oh my God, the foiling is so pretty. And we also have nice foiling there on the spine and look at the sprayed edges. Oh, I feel like Fairy Loot's always killing it with the sprayed edges. Oh my God, this end paper art. Oh, oh. Sorry, excuse me. This is maybe, I dare say, the prettiest, like, naked book I have ever seen in my life. Like, the use of different color. Oh my god. And look at the spine. Oh my god. <laughs> and the back. Oh, this is so stunning. Oh my god. Okay. I also have no clue what this is about. Also, look at this author's signature. It's so nice. I wish my signature looked like that. Oh. I love cracking open a, a book with sprayed edges. It's always so satisfying. <laughs> um, where's the thingy? I know there's a thingy here somewhere. There we go. A prince who wields shadows like a weapon. Excuse me. Thank you. That is all I needed to hear. <laughs> a girl with a secret ability to control light. This Southeast Asian fantasy features enemies to lovers. I gotta read this book. Like, I really need to read this book. It is just... It's so stunning. The premise sounds so good. Like both of these, both of these sound amazing and they're both so gorgeous. Really good book mail. I mean, look at all. Ooh, solid color palette on the book mail for today. I love getting some fun new books. Anyway, I need to calm down. That would be a great idea, yes. And it is time to end the vlog now that we have done the little book mail portion. So I ended up reading, I think six books in this reading vlog. Also, I did finish One Dark Window a few minutes ago and I, I still know how I feel about this one. And the ending was good, but I think it was a little predictable, but I did like the romance and I am like, I think I'm just intrigued enough that I do want to continue the series, but I, I just don't know about this one. But um, honestly, that's kind of all I have to say about it. I figured while I give a recap on all of the books that I read this week, we could also go through my spread and like check them off. And I think to do that, I'm going to use these little puffy stickers and kind of just stick them on these little squares because I would fill these squares in with like red marker but I think it would make the ink bleed and I really don't want to do that. So I think these little puffy stickers would be a great alternative. So I'm going to do that. But we will kind of just start with what I read first and we'll work back to what I read most recently. First in this video, I did finish Skyward by Brandon Sanderson and I really like this one. I thought it was a really fun time. I think it was a really good intro to sci-fi for me because it was young adult. It was very easy to understand. At some points it is a little bit juvenile, but obviously that is like, it's a young adult book. So it's not really a valid complaint, but like if you are not a young adult, I think it would be something to keep in mind if you pick this book up. But overall, it was really fun. And also, I completely forgot to mention it, but I had this epiphany like a couple of days after I finished reading this, that Imbot, who is the talking ship in this book, reminds me so, so much of two of Brandon Sanderson's other like weird talking companion things because there's a talking sword in Warbreaker called Nightblood, I think. And then there's also this spren from the Stormlight Archive whose name is Pattern, who I think is featured in Edge Dancer maybe, which is one of the novellas. All three of those, like same vibe, same energy. And to be honest, I love that because I love characters like that. I just think they're a really fun addition to the story. But I'm so glad that I picked this up. I've already ordered <laughs> the second and third ones in the series. So they should be coming in in a few weeks and I'm so excited. And I ended up using this one for a book to sink your teeth into because that is the only prompt that this book fit. But we can put a little ghost. I want to do this. I could put it in the middle, 
but that blocks the text. I can put it here. I think I might just put it in the middle. And if I don't like it, I'll like move it around, I guess. Then after that, I picked up Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice again. I am so glad that I finally got around to reading this book. I feel like I can officially call myself a vampire girly now. Like, I feel like I've hit all of the big vampire reads at this point. Like, I think I have because I've read Dracula, Interview with the Vampire, I've read Carmilla. Oh, Dowry of Blood. I feel like that is definitely like considered one of the greats now. What else? I'm like looking at my, oh, I read Dracul. I feel like I read a lot of like the quintessential vampire books. So, I mean, I'm not gonna stop reading vampire books. Don't get me wrong. I definitely have more, way more than I wanna check out. But I feel like I've hit all the big ones now and that's really exciting. But I really like this one. Very glad that I finally read it. And obviously I'm using this one for the vampire book to movie prompt. And I did start watching the movie. It is so freaking dramatic. It is insane to be honest. And I'm living for it. Then I also finished House of Hollow. I also really enjoyed this one. In the beginning, it didn't grab me, but as the book progressed, it just got more creepy and more weird and my interest was certainly piqued. And I ended up using this one for the gothic slash spooky cover. Boom. I don't even think you can see it, but that's okay. Then after that, I read Over the Garden Wall Distillatoria. Again, I'm so glad that I finally got around to reading this. It was so fun. If you guys like Over the Garden Wall, you need to find some way to read this because it's exactly the same feeling as the show and I love that. And obviously I'm using this one for the spooky graphic novel or manga so that can go right there. Then I finished My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. As I said earlier today, super fun, super goofy. I would recommend. <laughs> and this one I am moving to paranormal slash supernatural romance obviously because it's a it's a vampire romance. I did not get around to reading all the books on this TBR because originally that was what Bloodlines was going to be for. And then I still didn't read Bloodlines. Guys, I promise one of these days I will pick up Bloodlines, but it, it, it did not happen this week. But I love this one. So it was a it was a worthy sub. And bam, we have our first bingo. Well, I say our first bingo. It's the only bingo. I got the top row. So yay. And then today I finished up One Dark Window, which I'm using for the gothic setting one. I think. So I got the top row and the two middle ones from the second row, but there's my, my Vampathon spread all done. I feel like these ghosts are maybe not my best plan for these because they're white and like the rest of the paper's white, but I'm gonna keep them like that anyway. There's my finished Vampathon spread, woo. And those are all of the books that I managed to finish in this vlog. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Obviously I had the best time making it. I love Vampathon so much. It's like one of my favorite readathons to do throughout the year. So just thank you so, so much to all of the lovely hosts of Vampathon for putting on such a fun readathon. And it was just, it was just a really good time. Also, this is kind of a, a bittersweet moment because we are marking the end of my spooky season content. I know I know I'm about to shed a tear too, but I'm going to say goodbye to the season in the only way I know how. And that is with the back glasses. My friends, I feel like I haven't worn them enough this season and I'm swiftly running out of time. It's currently uh, like seven o'clock on the 30th of October. So I can wear them like tomorrow and that's it. So I've really been slacking on these, but obviously I could wear them like right now. Um, although I think it might be a bit too much. I don't know, it is kind of fun though. I don't know. <laughs> but I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed all of the content that I've put out over the last two months. Obviously fall content is still continuing because it is still fall, but my dedicated spooky season content is at its end. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It is my absolute favorite time of year to make videos and reading vlogs and I cannot wait for next year. I'm already planning, I already got plans. But also if you're watching this on the day that it is being posted, I hope you guys are having an amazing Halloween. I hope it's spooky. I hope you're watching some fun movies or doing something fun or just, you know, appreciating your Tuesday. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If, oh, if you did enjoy, let me know down below. Have you read any of the books that I read in this vlog? There are quite a few we could potentially talk about. <laughs> Or just tell me how you're doing, how your day's going. If you're watching this on Halloween, are you doing anything fun for Halloween? I think my Halloween plans are really just gonna consist of watching Hocus Pocus, eating some candy. We're gonna get a pumpkin shaped pizza. It's gonna be really chill. So I hope you guys are also just having a fun day. But I think with that, now I'm gonna let you guys go. Thank you so, so much for watching. And I will see you guys in my next video.